Go for it. Hey, Connor, thank you for meeting with me today. How are you? Good. How are you? Absolutely. Good. Uh, I just want to give you kind of um, our closeout steps uh, for the end of this process as we kind of transition uh, everything more in-house from uh, us here at Arctics. And, you know, I kind of want to start with our inter influencers interaction. I know this was an area that was uncomfortable for a lot of uh, of the senior leadership team, but you know our interaction has been great with them. They have been really diligent and thoughtful in uh, their posts, um, and that's been great to to see and have the interaction. And they've been very forthcoming with their response and you know what they're hearing back from their followers uh, on the product, uh, which is great. Um, in terms of our content goal, I will say we haven't really reached as much as I thought we would. Um, one of the things that we kind of ran into was, you know, a little bit understanding that Apple products do sell themselves a little bit and, but at the same time, not beating the product over the head of, um, how would I put it? Non-fitness junkie people. So the everyday wear understood, understands the value of wearing a watch like this. Um, and that's one of the lessons kind of learned is that, you know, it's such a big market that, you know, where the crossover appeal of Apple allows for, even though this market is typically has a lot of influencer um, pull compared to others, normal tech sector, uh, not so much on this product. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. Um I guess what types of influencers were, were Apple or were, were we looking to establish relationships with during this process, like in order to overcome those, uh, the non-fitness junkie area? Um, you know, I think just the standard, um, you know, fact Apple doesn't use normal spokespeople um, for it um, is a bit, is, you know, the normal advertising without these influencers actually kind of hit that market pretty well. And what actually did happen uh, was we're starting to see kind of a push in kind of that the fitness um, junkie actually tying taking that market share from some of the other smaller players, and which was the market that, you know, was, you know, the most up in the air because there's some pretty loyal people to other brands, but Apple is Apple. So, of course. Um, and I just want to, as, as we kind of transition over to your team, you know, the last uh, thing is next steps is, you know, just you guys keep improving on the product. Your team now knows, um, you know, the influencers and how is building relationships with them and getting the feedback on what, is going to be relevant in a fitness device and what is going to be relevant for uh, people in the future. So that's, that's going well. And I think the other big thing is going to be, you know, keeping R and D up with, with uh, being able to work and play nice with, you know, some of the other type of fitness products, like the mirror tonal, um, the, the fight bag, those type of things that they can all, succinct as one that they already work well with the phone just making sure it'll work well with the watch and that all of that um gets recorded is going to be going to be important but i think you know the introduction to the market is going really really well and it's um it's just been a pleasure working with you guys no absolutely been a pleasure having you guys on as a partner um with these next steps that you talk about um with Apple, uh, with us sort of transitioning to doing it on our own, what kind of, I guess, challenges do you see or have you seen with your previous clients post, um, post relationship wise? A lot of, a lot of the time it's, it's there, you don't run into too many challenges in terms of this type of tech product in this area, because you are Apple it's very 
as long as nothing major goes bad in the reliability or any of those PR things of hacks or anything, I, I don't foresee too much. It's a matter of just investing with it and being able to use it to keep growing Apple the way Apple has always grown over the last you know four decades. Got it. Got it. That's uh that's, that sound that makes a lot of sense. Uh, we thank you guys for putting as much effort as you did and sort of advancing um, the launch of our fitness wearable product and uh, our marketing efforts pushing forward. Oh, thank you, Connor. All right. Hi, Andrew. Um, thanks for uh, sitting down with us today. Um, we kind of just wanted to do uh, conduct a meeting as a kind of a closeout for how this project has gone over the past course of the few past few months. Um, kind of want to give you a layout of what has transpired and what we what the next steps will be moving forward. Um, so through this um, through this project, I know it's it's become it was new territory for Apple in the first place because a lot of time uh, for many dec for over a decade now, Apple has relied mostly on brand awareness in order to sell their products. So social media marketing such as this um, is a new um, territory for them. But we managed to build a map of a decent community of influencers, mainly focused in the fitness um, sector, as well as taking advantage of um, the name image likeness restrictions lifted by the NCAA to captivate some athletes turned uh, social media influencers in college, um, kind of using, kind of hitting those two sectors at the same time to address not only health, but athletic performance as well. Um, a lot of the content being put out there was related to workouts, fitness plans for these uh, individual trainer, influencer hybrids, um, and also athletes in their preparation for um, on-field performance as well, uh, kind of what, the, what metrics they look for um, to gauge their performance. Um, you know, um, it was challenging to kind of push with, uh, push the product at times um, because of the uncertainty when it comes to the use of data, when it comes to improving um, a fitness regimen or workout routines. Um, so sort of the next steps going forward would be to make sure your fitness, uh, fit, the Apple's fitness experts are constantly um, keeping in touch with their data trends Obviously, uh, data analytics, specifically when it comes to athletic performance, is still a relatively new field. Um, so it'll be important to keep their fingers on the pulse of the fitness and athletic communities in terms of what data they'll be looking for going forward. And then Apple making the kind of um, necessary software updates to accommodate those, uh, those interests. That makes sense. Is there any, has there been any issues with, any of our influencers and in the content they're producing or has all of it been up to Apple's values and standards? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's definitely been able to align with Apple's uh, core values in terms of like corporate social responsibility, inclusion, things like that. The main issue uh, with, with the, um, with the content as I guess in some cases been the execution in terms of how to incorporate it into con naturally into content um, as opposed, instead of just, giving like how to explaining videos, what making more exciting content to kind of get people behind uh, the purchase of the, of the new uh, new wearable as well as taking advantage of the data it provides. Um, so it's definitely been in step with what Apple's values are. It's more or less being able to properly leverage them to create exciting content that people will be captivated by. Is there anything that we can do in terms of integrating you know, the interface of the fitness watch to social media is their way of when they're developing this content. And a lot of them use Apple phone, Apple phones. Is there a way to, you know, kind of make that app part of their content in the same way as you get the metrics on the screen for Peloton or something like that? Correct. Yeah. So I think the next step would be to, um, like I said, uh, like you mentioned, connect kind of um, creating an application on the iPhone or iPad itself that connects directly to the watch. Um, that way it can be uh, more properly explained visually by these uh, influencers who are promoting the use of this technology um, and also just making it e easy, more easy, more ease of use for the people that are that are purchasing 
the um the fitness watch um but in terms of uh it, it should be um that integration is going to be key for the next step in terms of giving uh the, the consumer the full experience as to what we're looking to provide them with this upgraded um fitness watch i guess my my last my last question is you know as you're handing over this responsibility to us and we're going to take this on do you see the growth in the fitness market over the next five years um you know in the same way as it's from the past five or is this just a blip so what i would say is i think it's what's important i mean a big part of the reason why we went into this project i mean apple that kind of as this technology has become more popular apples are had already established a market share leading 37 percent in the fitness tech um, industry but our main the main threat going into this project was google's recent acquisition of fitbit um which google hadn't before entered the fitness tech um sector so these efforts kind of um, are meant to enhance Apple's view by the fitness community and kind of stave off Google. So if we uh, if we proceed, to, if Apple proceeds to upgrade the technology and the software being provided, there's a very, in all likelihood, we'll be able to maintain the dominant market share that they already have and hold off Google's efforts at upgrading the Fitbit to accomplish a similar goal. No, oh, that's that's good to hear, Connor. We appreciate the hard work and our, you know, if anything comes up, we're looking forward to working with you again, most definitely. Absolutely. It's a great, most as a productive partnership, and uh, we look forward to seeing the progress Apple's able to make in the future. Right. Thank you, Connor. Thank you.